Hey, hey. Yo, dude, how you doing? Pretty good, how about you? I am doing pretty good. I'm doing great, in fact. Uh, and I'm looking forward to this coach and listen more than you know. Good. <laughs> good, good. Is there any reason why? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just giving you shit. Um, well, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind, like, I, uh, I know we coached before, but uh, give me a recap on how you're doing, where you're at now, and uh, kind of what you want to focus on today. Sure. Uh, so I am a Zerg in low masters currently. Um, I've dipped actually quite a bit since we last coached. Um, right now I want to focus on Zerg versus Zerg. Um, I'm sitting at about 47% for the win rate. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Nice. Okay, well, whenever you're ready, bro, we can jump into a game and check it out. Uh, Zerg, I'm just going to say it right now, though. Zerg versus Zerg, you can play a very standard way over and over and over in ZVZ. And it's really just about understanding how your opponent spins their larva uh, heavily. Uh, give me a, sorry, uh, give me the, the lobby host. You give me party lead, just so I can, uh, there, there you go, perfect. Good shit, good shit, good shit. But yeah, larva is everything in ZVZ. So if you're not doing scouts with like speed links and stuff, uh, th and putting your overlords in the right spots at the right times, that'll definitely be something we'll talk about. Uh, especially since okay. this is like masters, so like we can definitely go a bit more technical with things. But, uh, yeah, man. Um, we'll see what's going on for you. <laughs> what style do you generally like to go for? And, uh, there's like a massive fly that just came into my room. <laughs> like, flew right by my face. Uh, what style do you generally like to go for? And, uh, uh, typically I like to play, uh, roaches. Uh, mutas I really like, but I don't feel like I'm capable of properly dude. handling them yet. And I hate muta versus muta so much. I got a build for you. It's, a, it's yeah. a perfect build, okay? Tell me what you think. Before we... I'm going to pause this really fast. And before we jump into this, you tell me if you think this sounds good. Opening up... Opening the game up with Roach's three base... Like, Speedling into Roach three base. And then you go into Roach Ravager for the mid game. And then it switches into having a Spire. And if the game does not end on Roach Ravager, it becomes Roach Ravager Muta. And a lot of times then, the game will just be over. That sounds really good. Uh, it, it's not like a flawless build. It won't, it won't always, forever, always win the game because obviously, you know, if you don't have any type of a lead and your opponent has like a ton of Hydras and maybe like Lurkers or something, it's going to be kind of scary for you. But there is going to be so many games you're going to play where if you're both going Roach, Roach, Ravager, Roach, Roach, Ravager constantly, uh, and suddenly you're like, you have 10 Mutas pop out of nowhere, and he's like, oh, fuck, okay. It puts him into an all-in, and all you have to do is focus fire his Ravagers with your Mutas, and you just win the game. It's ridiculous. Huh. I like it. All right, so we'll look at your game. We'll talk about what you're doing, and then uh, I can give you an example build of that after as well. Great. And do you, uh, how many, uh, just out of curiosity, how many replays do you have? We might just spend all time on this one, but... Uh, I've got, like, two, maybe three. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, so... Yeah, we'll see, we'll see what's going on. We'll see what's going on. I do tend to struggle a lot with uh, defending early pressure. So like the 13-12, the 12 pools, I tend to overreact a lot. We have time to cover any of that. Just proper responses would be cool too. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, uh, I'll just, uh, it doesn't happen this, it does not happen this game, but I'll just tell you what it is, okay? It's super easy peasy. If you 16 hatch, always 16 hatch against Zerg, it's very, very good. And then... You're going to be going for, you know, your gas pool, like 18, 17, whatever. That's totally fine. But all you have to do to counter people who go for early pool shit, any type of early pool stuff, is you don't build an overlord at 19 until 2 minutes. And I'll show you what I mean. Right now you're at 17. Uh, mm -hmm. You're building your pool. Back down to 16. You're building your... Well, you're basically saving the larva. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, exactly. You just don't larva cap. So now you're going to go back up to... You're going to spend your last larva to go up to 19 supply right there. Now you do... For the next 30 seconds, you do not touch your larva. Uh, it's like right at two minutes is right when you're going to hit that third larva again. So you do not fucking build any larva. And here's how the timings work. If he 12 pulls you, you're on most maps. This map is... This map is what I would say... Is, it fits into the category of most maps. Unless he were to run his lings on the south side of that cliff you're flying over right now with your first overlord. The point I'm trying to make here is, is your you will see his lings running out of his base between 130 to 140 if it is a 12 pool. Okay? 
So you would okay. see you would see links like just crossing around like 132 or some shit like that. Like you'd start seeing them cross if he goes right to your base. If you see links crossing between 140 to 150, it's a 1312. Uh, or he just waited to send his links out, which would just be bad because even if you're wrong, and you're like, oh, that's a 1312, and he just waited on a 12 pull, and he, and he has no form of speed or bane follow up aggression there, it's just going to be super easy to defend your natural. So a 12 pull needs to get across the map like ASAP if he wants to even do anything with it. Um, so it's pointless for him to sit there. It would just mean he's kind of bad. Um, and then anything after uh, 140, like so, 130 to 140 is 12 pull. 140 to 150 is uh 13 12 and then anything after 150 to two minutes if you if you see lings then you're never going to see the six lings crossing ever it's only going to be two lings and what that would mean is is you don't know then if it is a 13 12 or a 12 pool but you do know he's running his lings in an awkward location around the map to hide from your overlords and you can see the follow-up lings which is why two minutes is a huge number here because 150 to two minutes means if you see two lings crossing the map no one's going to fucking have a pool down that fast. And no one is going to make lings that fast. So that means do not spend your larva because this dude has six lings on the map somewhere else already closer to your base that are not... They're, they're taking a detour to take longer to get there because they avoided overlord scouting. But they are there. So okay. if you if you see lings at all between... Before two minutes, between 130 to two minutes, you just fucking save lings and make them. And the way you can kind of like differ your reactions or alter your reactions is if you see a 12 pool... You can get away with just making, like, we're talking seriously, like, 10 lings and stopping. Because by the time you have 10 lings, you're also going to have queens that'll spawn out. And you can also pull your drones to help you. And you can defend your base with ling, drone, queen, your easy, your easy peasy, you're good to go. And as long as you don't overling there, you're in a great spot. Because you can just drone back into it, and you know he's got no follow-up aggression there. If it's a 13-12 in any way, you can then look at that and go... All right, well, now maybe I'm going to make a defensive Bane Nest, or maybe I'm going to make a defensive Spine Crawler in, a, in, like, you know, in combination with also making Lings, and also do not pull your drones. Never pull your drones against 1312, because there is a very high chance it could be Bane Ling Bust with Zerglings, and if you pull your drones, all that's going to happen is you have to run your drones back into the main, you're going to lose a ton of mining time, and you're also putting them at risk to blowing up the Banes. Like, you'll never be able to fight Ling, you know, Ling Bane with Drone Ling, ever. That's just a, a losing battle for you. And usually they won't have a natural behind the 1312. Yeah, well, they, 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 right? they, they could have a really late one. Like, by the time your overlord gets there, if it's a 1312, like, you'll have already kind of have had to major choices of what, have, how you're going to react to it. But if you, if you to, to further confirm it, when your overlord gets to his natural, if it's a 1312 and there's no natural at all, it's definitely Bane Bust. It's definitely, like, gas-focused. If you get to his natural and the natural's like we're talking like 10% of the way done, like super early, it means that there's a, a good chance that it's just like speedlings and maybe like light baneling pressure, but it's definitely going to be speedlings. And if you get to his natural and you see a natural that's like 50% of the way done or like 60% of the way done, you know it's a 12 pull and it's a gasless 12 pull that he could be taking a gas after he starts a natural with. Okay. That's what all those timers mean. Um, because and then for the twelve pool, that's where you can pull the drones and you kind of drone dance. You don't want to fight, but you just want to kind of pull them off your hatch, right? Yeah, twelve pool is the only one. 12, twelve pool is the only one you ever want to pull your drones against ever. Never pull against thirteen twelve though ever, because uh, you'll just die. Like you'll just get you'll, you'll take more damage than it's worth. Okay. All right. Um. Uh, so now we'll see what's going on after this. Okay, so now you're still mining. Okay, you're mining gas with three after your, uh, after your speed. This is definitely something that you need to kind of question about why you're going to do it. So if you're going to mine gas with three. It only makes sense if you're going to go for, like, a pressure. Uh, or it's, it's two ways. There's two ways it makes sense. One is you're going to go for pressure. Two is you're going to go for tech. So if you're going to do a build that was, like, really fast spire or really fast, like, evo chamber type shit, then it makes sense to leave three on gas. But if you're going to go for, like, a standard third base, like a 30 supply third base, you're going to go for, like, maybe Ling Bane or Ling Roach, don't ever leave three on gas. 
uh, at this okay. stage. Uh, so, we'll, I mean, we'll see. I'm going to fast forward it just really fast. I want to see how you kind of choose it. Okay, you go for a third, and then what tech do you go for? You go for a Bane Nest. Okay, so what you want to do, we'll, we'll back it up now, back to when you got speed. What you want to do now uh, to properly give yourself the right amount of resources here is right now when you hit 100 gas, take just, if you're going to go Banes, I really like that a lot because it is the most safe option. Take one drone off of your gas and uh, you're going to then basically, uh, it's going to allow you to have gas build up a little bit slower to slow down the cost of a Bane Nest. It's going to give you a little bit more minerals to work with to then get your third out a little bit faster. And it's going to also allow you to spend your larva and all that, all that stuff and, you know, just not have an over extension on your gas this early. Um, because if also, if, you're, if your plan is to go for a third, you don't actually need to rush a Baneling Nest as fast as possible. Because even if your opponent does do that and he stays with three on gas, you will still have Banes defensively in time. Because it's the, the only way he could actually punish you for this is if he were to run literally like into your natural and make Banes. And you were like, oh fuck, he's okay. making Banes before I can have Banes in time. But if he makes, if he like runs across the map like 60% of the way or 70% of the way, and he makes Banes, you will still have time, the difference of time for him to where he made Banes, to then run into your base, you would still have Banes in time to defend that. If you do the one drone off gas thing is what I'm, what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, and then also having one drone off gas, like, it allows, it just, it basically it increases your mineral capacity a little bit, and everything you're doing right now is very heavy on the minerals, because you want to make either lings or drones, and you want to make queens, and you want to make a hatchery and overlords. Like all this stuff is just mineral based. And I would say ideally what you want to do too, if you can, if you, especially if you start seeing aggression come out of him, you want to get that third queen as soon as you can out of your natural. And you want to do something like make a crew tumor toward, to, uh, to go toward your third base so that you can actually uh, cover it with queens. And so you can like, you, cause you can use your queens to zone Banes out by from him. And then you can use your Banes to zone out the clump of whatever he has. So if he comes in okay. mass, your Bane's own. If he comes in isolation, your Queen's own. That's ideally how... That's just like the most well-rounded safe way to open ZVZ. Uh, okay. so, you're, so your build is already really good, other than the fact that you just didn't take one off gas. That's the only thing I would say that's... Uh, that's uh, messing up here for you. Um, you get your third going. You see, he doesn't have a third either. So here's the, here's the thing, okay? I'm going to ask you a question now. If you scout with your overlord, I love your overlord placement, by the way. It's very good. But if you see there's no third and your third is already started, I mean, there is a drone coming to it now, but because there's no third, what do you think that means when you see something like that? Uh, either he's pooling lings or he's droning like crazy. Okay, I would. I, based. Yeah, I would. I, th I would say those are two. Uh, those are two potential options. Um, I would say I, I like your follow up here that you're going to try and uh, confirm and scout. I would say if he's not going to take a third super fast, pooling lings makes it's it's a little bit less common, and here's why. If he was going to pool lings, he probably would have prioritized a gas super fast if he's going to delay his third. Because if you're going to go for a mass ling style, it, what that means is, is you're probably going to take your drones off gas once you have speed, and no matter what, and pull a fuckload of lings. And then that would also in, uh, incentivize him to take a faster third so that he could have more larva to make more lings with faster than you. So pulling lings is probably not going to be the case. Making mass drones would only be the case if you also scouted him and saw he was probably going for like a fast layer. Like he was going to just tech super quick. Uh, because then maybe you're fighting against like a two base build, uh, where maybe he's going to do something like Roach, uh, Roach Evo Chamber wall off, or he's going to go for like fast spire or something like that. Uh, like he's going to tech to a layer super quick, but what's probably happening is, um, I would say there's a good chance that if you run through his base right now, like the more common things I would say might happen here is he's definitely just prioritizing his tech, whatever it is. And he's probably going to have either a Bane Nest or a... Roach Warren. That's one of the only reasons why I feel like this would make any sense. Um, but yeah, it, it, like it could be a lot of things, right? Uh, it, just know that you should feel a little... Like, God, this fly is fucking so annoying. I'm so sorry. It just keeps flying in my face and it's so distracting. Um, yeah, you're good. 
uh, it's basically scouting him is important and you want to just know exactly what it's going to be the follow-up of. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say probably tech because the fact that he is going to take a third still kind of rules out now that he's going to have a really fast layer. But I would, I would say that you, I would not be surprised if you saw a Roachworn really fast or a really fast Bane Nest. And that's exactly what you see. You see a really, really, really fast Bane Nest. Um, and that means that this dude never took a drone off gas, 100%. And the fact that you never took a drone off gas? Well, I, I mean, I guess, here's, it, okay. So you could have afforded a Bane Nest just as fast as he did, but you prioritized the third first, which is correct, by the way. I agree with what you did more. Uh, okay. So... I would say as a response to this, what you what you do, and, and it is what you do. I, I remember speeding it up and I saw you do this. You just make a Bane Nest and, that, and that's fine. Um, but just know that if you had only two on gas, it's it sounds weird, but it's true. If you had a, only two on gas, you could actually get your Bane Nest even faster while also getting your third. And the reason why is because you're not actually taking your Bane Nest as soon as you have 50 gas. Because if you did that, you'd be doing what he did, which is building your Bane Nest way before you take a third base. Right. Uh, so yeah, Minerals is actually uh, your limiting resource here. But I like your scout. That's good. And now you know there's potential here. Like you saw the Mineral Line at his natural. It looks similar to yours. You have a little bit more than he does. Like, you ran through the middle line, and you're like, okay, yeah, we see, like, about five drones. And, if, yeah, by the way, if you don't do that, you definitely need to start doing that. Like, paying attention to the actual drone count. And all you mm -hmm. do is you just pay attention to yours and his. Like, who's got... Wh where's, the, where's the number here? Where's the difference? Um, and then... Uh, you know. Then it tells you where his larva is going. And... Uh, basically... Um... I mean, going to his base then too and seeing like you know what his what his gas still looks like is definitely also important. But yeah, the drone the drone line tells you so much about larva and then yeah, and then it's like third late third. I don't know. I'm trying to. I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself. <laughs> yeah, the, no, la no, no. the, the larva is very very important. Well, uh, if you kind of have your like production cycles, it's like okay, is he making drones or is he making wings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And uh, you can see he's making banes. He doesn't have a lot of lings on your side of the map. I l and this is also, again, good that you're... I like that you're just kind of going for, like, a counter. Because the fact that you're going for a counter, it shows, like, you know, you have confidence that you don't give a shit about the fact that he's making banes on your side of the map because you know there's no flood. So, I mean, that's really good, right? I mean, you're you're, you're pulling him back with pressure-wise, so that's good shit. Yeah, by the way, uh, Scorpling, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, everybody that's just joining the stream right now. We're in the middle of a coaching lesson, but what up, guys? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very much appreciated. Uh, we're we're teaching Zerg Masters level right now. Uh, and then you know, so like right now, you you forced damn you forced a pullback on him, which is really good. You have you you're both kind of in that stage where you're reacting with a shitload of lings, right? Um. Uh, and now you want to be basically, so I'm going to say your spine crawler is a little bit of an overreaction. All I think you need to do here is just make more queen and make banelings. And, uh, I, I, I do like you eventually took the, uh, the drone off of your gas. I do like that a lot, but you, I mean, and I also, I do like that you're making drones again, I, but yeah, I, I just think the spine is maybe a little too over much of an overreaction it's i mean I, I, i'm gonna ask you a question how confident do you feel in ling bane versus ling bane first of all uh not particularly right now okay well then fuck it if you really okay so yeah just make this fine then it's okay um it's not that big it's it's it will set you back a little bit but i i actually think you might be better off just building queens and we're talking about not even stopping at just three queens you could actually queen up to like maybe six uh as weird as that sounds and it, it it's only it would only make sense though if your opponent's going for like ling flood ling flood ling flood ling flood because keeping as many drones up as you can mining as fast as possible is definitely huge it's it's massive because the goal the, the whole stage of the game that you're in right now the goal is who can make drones faster while you both pressure each other 
That is that is the stage of the game you're in because this stage ends like you hit a finish line at uh, by a certain point. It's when you get enough drones to be able to switch into roaches. And whoever goes first to that is going to probably win the game. Be if you're both being really back and forth aggressive. Uh, because whoever can stabilize on more drones faster, as soon as you get roaches as well, Ling Bane just kind of ends. And because now if you have Ling, uh, if you have Bane Roach defensively, roaches can now just crush Lings and Banes all day. And then your own Banes behind your roaches can crush like if he tries to swarm you. Uh, so things like a spine will definitely slow you down at getting to that stage. But if you feel for now, it's, I would say, a, a look at a spine as like training wheels. If you feel like you really need it for now, you can, but try to get out of using it in the future. Uh, for sure. Okay. And at what point do you want to drop that roach warren? Is that like two base saturation? When you're, or? when your natural has about 12. When your natural is about 12 and your it doesn't matter about your third. When your natural is about 12 and your main's fully saturated on, in the mineral line. That's when you want to drop an Evo and a Roach Warren. And then if you feel confident, uh, you know, again, the way the way you should feel confident is just having Banes. Once you feel confident, you can just keep squeezing out drones, 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 have Banes defensively. Uh, you can actually go into gas as well at your natural, like a second and a third gas at your natural once you're fully saturated on your natural and you also start saturating your third. So, like, if your third base has, like, five drones on it, or, like, six drones on it, your natural is fully saturated, you could take two more gases at your natural then, and then build more drones again to fill those up, and you can then afford things like going into a layer, going into plus one weapons, going into a roach speed when layer's done, and also making roaches. Okay. And the layer comes after the, like, two and a half base saturation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you want to make the roach horn and the evo first, and then you can make the layer after. And uh, the layer... The, the, probably, if you're playing... I mean, it, like, here's the thing that changes, though. That's why it's not always perfect. The layer timing changes based off how many banes you have to make. So if, you, if you're making banes more often than not because he's being really aggressive, you're going to have to have a later layer. But if he's like kind of lightly pressuring you and you feel okay with honestly making just four banes and you're done, then you can make a layer faster. That's just how, it's cause that's just how it goes. You have to react to what he's doing. And the way you react properly is overlord placement. And you have to see what he's doing out of his base, like how he's if he's flooding you or not repeatedly. You have to always keep tabs on the minimap to really know if you need more banes or not. Okay. And the way the way you should react to this, the way you should, the way you should think about this is if you go, holy shit, he has more units than me. I need banes. And then if he floods you again, like if, if another wave comes out, okay, yeah, I need more banes. If another wave of units comes out, okay, yeah, I need more banes. Every time you see a wave, you need more banes. And when I say more banes, you need probably two or three, roughly each time uh so but if you see an army come out of his base where you're like yeah i have pretty much just as much as he does two banes and then stop you always want to have at least two banes always but if if you feel confident two is fine if you feel if you every time another wave comes out and it makes you feel even less confident and add an additional two or three and you're good to go okay and then do and not like, or go ahead uh, so you say something say what you're gonna say uh, so like if i'm making defensive banes here where would i want them saying well i want them like split up at the top of my ramp at my you, natural you would want like them in front of your natural through? you would want them in front of your natural okay. uh you would want them i like you could actually make like two banes and just leave them on top of your ramp at your natural and then have more banes like and you can like uncontrol group them even um just in case he tries to like flood your main and then you could have like an additional like two or three banes or whatever kind of roaming between your natural and your third and again, you want to have overlord spread not only in front of his base at this stage because you all right now you have like six overlords. You'd also want to have uh, like two or three overlords. Uh, like here, I'll, I'll ping. Okay, I'll ping how this goes. So make sure you're on everyone vision so you can see my pings. So this overlord yep. is really good. Always leave it there. That's great. This overlord that was right here, oh, it got yeah. pushed away because of the queen. You should move that second overlord, the top ping, to now. You should add a third overlord and have one overlord there and an overlord there. So you can see all ramps that he can exit out of at your base, right? So that's three overlords at his mm -hmm. base now. And your next overlord should be like this. You should have like one here. You should have one here. And you should have one here. And then once you got your seventh overlord, I would say put it like down there. So the okay. point is, is you like have three on his side of the map. You put like one in the center and then you put three on your side of the map. And then if you make overlords again after this, you can fill in other gaps like one there, one there. Like you fill it, you go back to filling in the middle again. But getting three on his side, three on your side, those are both really important uh, on this map specifically because there's three entrances to both your bases. And then having the one in the center is very important because it if you miss the flood, 
coming out of his base initially, that middle overlord, is a it's it's a backup uh, check basically. Where if he if you miss the first one and you just don't pay attention, you might still catch it with the middle one. The middle one, then the very middle of the map is always the most common place he's going to be running through back and forth. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yo, Minzray, thank you for the if sub, If he goes dude. mutas, then do I just kind of lose those, or how do I go about If he goes back? mutas, you should figure that out before he has them. And you can tell that by if he never makes roaches, and if he just keeps flooding lings, his only, his, his, hack, his only attacking unit. And if you're playing fast and efficient, you should be fully saturated before he has mutas, too. So if he does go mutas eventually, you can then, if you figure that out later, but with like a Zergling scout, you can be like, oh, cool, I'm going to, now I'm just going to pull my overlords back, and I might lose a couple of them, it's fine, but... I'm, you know, you pull him back then at that point when he is going muta. You should definitely have a tabs or like have an indicator that he's going muta though by the fact that he never makes roaches. Like the chances are higher then. Because it's not always about you being defensive either, right? Like you'll also poke him with stuff every now and again. And if you never see roaches being made ever, that's a, that's a muta indicator. And if you never see, or sorry, if you, if you do see gas really, really fast, like an emphasis on just gases, that's a muta indicator as well. If you're like, wow, my third base has 10 drones on the middle line and his has 6 on the gas. That's Mutas. That's like someone who's desperate to get Mutas super fast. <clears throat> but yeah, like right now, uh, you know, you have... Uh, I mean, you're kind of bouncing around the map. I like your micro there. That was good. Your rotating pullback. I did not like that one, though. <laughs> 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 yeah, you got to, like, make sure you always re-issue re uh, a move command after, an, uh, like, a detonation happens. But that first one was good. You had the right idea. Um, but, like, right now, I'm going to say, like, in your build, you're falling behind a little bit. And not, not necessarily to him, but for what you could be. Because you didn't make a third queen for the longest time. And you should ideally make a third queen if you're going to go Banes. Like, before your third hatch is even done. And then you should have injects at all three of your hatches right away. Uh, like, the first two queens obviously is normal. But your third hatch, as soon as it's done, should almost have a queen just standing next to it. And then it just be, it starts being injected immediately. And once you have control like this, if we look at production, you should definitely be going crazy on drones. Uh, and also, I would say a good tip would be leave always, like, two Zerglings at your base... Like, we're talking, like, at your natural, like, inside of your natural or, like, in the ramp of your main base. And if you ever fuck up a fight, if you ever fuck up a fight, and you're like, okay, I gotta go back home and run away now, you immediately go back to those two lings, and you turn them into banes. And they're called safety banes. And the reason why this is good is because if your opponent decides to counter flood you, because he freaked out and made a shitload of lings while you kind of messed up your micro, and you lost all your lings to, like, a bane ling or something... You can make new lings to defend yourself, and those safety banes you're just starting to make now, well, they will finish together with the new lings you made, so you will once again have ling bane. Because if you don't have those, those banes, and you just make lings, there is a good chance he's going to start running your bases over. Because if he floods you, and you have no banes, and he starts making banes in your face while killing your lings as they're isolated, uh, because he's killing one hatchery per one hatchery, like he's killing your lings as they spawn into him, that's a good way to lose the game right there, like right away, because you just messed up a micro fight. So safety banes always really, really, really good at the early stage of the game. And I would say honestly, never take fights like what you just did. Uh, I know, you, I know, uh, you you kind of won that fight, but that wasn't an overwhelming fight. Like, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, do not ever take ling fights unless the ratio is like four to one. If you're gonna make drones. Because a trade-out like this, all this does is it reinforces that you both are going to remake lings. Otherwise, one of you is going to lose map control. And you'd be better off just relying on Banes for a detonation. Otherwise, keeping him busy and making him feel pressured to make, to make more lings. Like, the more lings you make him make is great. But if he makes a bunch of lings and then you don't lose a lot of yours and you just fall back, that's still wonderful for you because you can defensively use Banes and you're great. But if you ever trade lings out like that and you don't have the intention of flooding lings, all that's going to happen is you're going to lose map control and you're going to have to then make lings defensively anyways. Like, and you're going to give yourself a chance to take damage. So never trade unless you have an overwhelming amount or unless you're going mass lings. Like if you, if you okay. plan on making more lings. And again, the number I would say is like at least three to one, probably more like four to one. Uh, so like a big fucking swarm for you versus a little bit for him. Okay. Because look at the production. See how you're making lings again? 
-hmm. Like you're only making two though. But if you trade these out again, like that's like okay, you killed the queen, but now you're gonna, but now you're gonna you're gonna trade again. Like you 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 are trading lings again here and there, and it's nice that you're getting damage done. I'll say that. Like you killed the queen, it's great. You killed some lings too, but you're making more lings again, and you're putting yourself into this like I'm gonna stay in this like all in stage longer and longer and longer and longer. When if you just did, if you just did a non-committal ling poke. And let's say you got one really good Bane Link connection off where you just detonated 15 Lings at once. And then suddenly now you still can kill the queen. But instead of only having like 12 Lings left, you still have like 20 or like 22 or something like that. And you don't, and then you're, and then those 14 Lings is actually seven drones. Right. That's the difference. Make a drone window. Exactly. Because you, if you can put your opponent in a situation where he makes Lings, 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 and you don't throw them away because you're droning and you trade very cost efficiently with Banes like you did one time earlier in the middle of the map, that's when you keep your opponent like, starving, where he only has eight drones on the natural, and you have a fully saturated natural, and even like a fully saturated third. And then he's going to counterattack you at some point with Ling Bane, and he runs into Roach Bane, and you have just like the full, full pumping Roach phase, and you just win. Because you, you just have so much more shit than he does there. So you definitely got to be uh, super careful about that stuff. Uh, about how often you want to make lings like this, because yeah, it definitely will slow your 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 your, your uh, transition down like pretty hard. And now you can see he's flooding you. This is when you definitely want to be falling back, and you want to be using banes defensively. I would say you could get away with like two to four banes here, and the reason why is because you have a very respectable amount of lings too, and it's because you made a lot. But look at the production for him. He is he's full all in mode right now. He's like I'm making lings all game. I don't give a shit. And if you switch into Roach Bane, it will be so easy to defend this. If you, once you have like 12 Roaches and like 4 Banes, easy. You, you, the game is fucking over. Like he can never actually stop that. And then on top of that, furthermore, when you get plus 1, the game is very over. But right now what you're doing is you're actually going into this like counter attack base trade style where you're both kind of attacking each other's third bases. I'm going to tell you right now, this does not benefit you. This benefits him. And the reason why is because you have the advantages right now and the person with the advantages who then goes into a base trade mode the game no longer becomes uh, as simple as advantages and disadvantages now it becomes kind of chaotic and messy and both of you are liable to make a lot of fucking mistakes and if you happen to make more mistakes than him now because the game is in that stage you're gonna lose like you could throw the game away you could throw all your leads away so if you're the one with like the drone advantage you're the one with actually drones in your third and if you keep tabs on how often he's making lings and how many are being made if you're like, wow, my Banes are getting good connections, and even though my Banes are getting good connections, he still has as much or even more Lings than me. That shouldn't feel bad, because you're like, okay, he's made a fuckload of Lings. That should feel really good, because you're like, wow, he's overmaking so many Lings so great, like so often, and I'm able to keep thinning out the numbers and like having a chance to keep killing it repeatedly, which means that I probably have like 20 more drones than him right now, or like 15 more drones than him right now, which is, you have 11 more. Or sorry, you have uh, 9. You have 9 more drones than he does. Which is not bad, that's still really good. But keeping tabs on that, right? Keeping tabs on how often you make lings and how big his ling retention is against you is really, really, really important. Because it tells you, it, how, that in itself gives you an, uh, like an idea of if you're heading drones or not. But like you can see right now, you thinned out on his army at his third and now because you've gone for like this weird base trade, you've compromised your third because you've given him positioning on it. So now you have to defensively bust into him rather than him aggressively busting into you, which is way harder. And the point, the reason why I'm saying that, that, that why that makes sense and why that's hard is because there, there's like a clock, right? The clock before, if you're, if you're defensive, the clock is you get, you are mining more than he is every minute because you have more drones. So you will produce army faster than he will. And if he doesn't do something right away, he will fall further and further behind. And suddenly you also, and also he doesn't have roaches and you do, you have roach tech. And if he, ha if he waits until you now have roaches as well, he's fucked. Like it's going to be really bad. So it puts pressure on him to do something, which makes him have higher chances to have micro mistakes. But now the pressure is reversed and it's on you because of the base trade thing you just went for. And now you have to do something right now. Otherwise your third is dead, which puts you in a two base versus three base scenario, which is still not unwinnable because your drone count is still way better than his. But losing that third is fucking painful, right? It sucks. So 
you've put yourself in this position because you've, you've uh, sacrificed positioning because you went for a base trade. So never do that if you have the advantage. And you should know you should have known you had the advantage based off of how many lings this dude is making and how efficient you have been up to this point to a degree. Like it, I would say it could have been better. And for all the reasons we talked about, like not throwing your lings away with ling versus ling and stuff like that. But mostly, I would say you still had better trades than him, and you did a better job than him overall throughout the early stages of the game so far. Like, I have not seen him yet get a really good bane connection, but you did, essentially. And you're making drones. And like right there, there was a little bit of a, a blunder, right? Well, I'll go back mm -hmm. and watch it slower. Okay, I, I kind of skipped it again. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, okay, well, one more time. Like 628. Yeah. So, like, your Banes are on A-move right now. And then, because they blew up on a couple Lings right away, and then his three Banes come into you, and they blow up your two remaining Banes, which means the trade there was, like, you probably lost maybe five more Lings than he did, and you also lost one, one more Bane Ling than he did, which is not that bad. It's not that bad of a trade. It's not like that trade was awful. But the thing that sucks for you is, though, is that that was all of your Banes. And he didn't only have three Banes. He has, like, 12 Banes. Because he still has another seven already there, and he's making two more on top of that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like now this fucking sucks because now you have to micro extremely hard because you have to figure out a way to deal with a good uh, nine banelings and also a like a comparable ling count to yours, to a degree. Which means you have to micro like crazy. It's just this is very hard micro now. So your third is probably gonna die. Essentially, is what that means. And you're, you're, well, the way you're reacting to this is you're going for a counter, and if this guy just defensively makes banes, it will not work. Also, if he would have ran his banes into your natural, the game's over. Yep. So you're, you're playing a very risky style, and it's because, and this is what happens when you make a, when you, when you're the one playing greed, who's going drones, and you're playing against somebody who is just going ling bane, ling bane, ling bane, ling bane. Like this guy has not made a drone for the last four minutes or three minutes of this game, um, which is how some people play. But just know, if you're the one playing economy, do not ever base trade like this. This is this is a panic right here. This is desperation, what you're doing. And you're hoping that it just works out. But if your opponent is solid at just being aggressive, he's always going to win. Uh, but if you if you just play a solid style of defensive, uh, like defensive setup, defensive play, you'll always be able to defend your drones and you will win because players like this, the red player, They'll burn out over time, and they won't ever have as much uh, economy as you, and they'll just—they just won't have enough production as you do. I got—I got a, I got a question. When you when you play Ling Bane, uh, how do you control group your units? Uh, I shouldn't, but I have them both on three, and then I have Bane Lings on four in addition to being on three. Okay, so I think that's correct versus Protoss and, and uh, Terran. Don't do that against Zerg, though. Against Zerg, remove. Like, do you ever use the steel command, for instance? Uh, I have a control number bound to steel for everything. Okay. So I either add or steal everything. Okay. So I would say just steal banes. Every time you make banes, steal them out and put them in their own group. Uh, and, like, stop grouping them together because I've seen a couple of times, like, two, two fights now, your banes detonate off of uh, lings, and that's going to fuck you all the time. It's always going to screw you over. Just have them isolated so that you can mo always move command them, and then... Your banelings should only ever be on attack move command about 1% of the time that they're actually alive. So they should be move commanding 99% of the time, all the time, like just as much as possible. And the second you see his lings swarm your banes, really quickly go to the bane group, a move it really fast, and then immediately go back to move commanding it again. Like you wrote, it's like it's like it's like a stutter step of banes basically, where you a move it and move command right away, and let them stay in move command again. That way you don't get a juicy connection and then like two or three really bad ones. You get juicy connection after juicy connection after juicy connection because if you move command the second after you A move, you will always get that first juicy connection because that's how Bane's AI works. It'll One Bane will detonate everything in the vicinity. Not everything will detonate all at once. And then as soon as the detonation has pa has happened, which literally all it takes is A move, move command. That's it. That's it. Do not A move again until another juicy connection is ready. You, so you always just want to get that juicy, juicy connection. And then guard your, your Bane's with Ling's by moving your banes always into your zergling area and a moving your lings to kill his lings off of your banes and that's all you do uh but yeah it's almost always move commanding your banes it's very rarely ever a moving it's only when you know there's going to be a connection 
All right, and then now, um, so, we're, we're, you know, I mean, you pulled him back, which buys you time, but your third still died, so it's still not great. And now you're making roaches. So now this game is, all, it's like almost awkwardly turning into some weird all-in to a degree, but you're going back to drones. I mean, you could totally, like, defensively take your third and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's kind of a clown fiesta. Yeah, it's, uh... If you're going to make roaches and, you know, if you're only a few of them like you did, that's okay. You can be defensive with it, but you got to definitely, right now, as you definitely got to make your choice if you're going to retake that third or if you're just going to go counter all in him. Cause, and if you kind of don't do either, if you don't take your third and you make roaches and just sit there on two bases, you're losing the game both ways there, for sure. So, so far, do you have any questions about anything that we talked about? Uh, no, sounding good so far. Um, okay. Okay, uh... <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's two ways to steal for people who are curious. You can, you can shift, control, click them out, and then rebind them into a different group. And that's just that. That's the old way you could do it. Or a new way you can do it is you can use an alt command. It's basically, if I have like 10 lings and I only have four of them selected and I hit alt 2, it deletes them from group 1 and puts them in group 2 by themselves. So if you make banes and you do that, it's really easy to... Uh, quickly rotate Banes into their own groups. Okay. And then you're making... You're, so you're going for aggression again. So this game is definitely... Uh, you're definitely, like, making the game... Uh, just, I would say... Okay, these Banes are about to get a good connection. I would say you're making the game more aggressive than it needs to be, and the reason why is because... Like, I mean, there's there's been a lot of aggression that's already happened up to this point. There's been a lot of trades. But if you lose these links, this is at a stage where you're not really s super stable because not only do you not have Banes defensively at your with your roaches right now when you have a low roach count, but you also have a low roach count. So if your army dies here, watch the production. You're going to probably have to remake. Uh, there's a good chance I will see you remaking links again. Um, because your roach count is so low that if you just make roaches, there's a good chance he'll overpower you. If, if he were to flood you and go crazy. I mean, it, it's fortunate for you, though, that he's making drones. Uh, I mean, that, that's the best case scenario for you. Because if he was still flooding lings, and you got over here with... If there was nothing in this third mineral line, and suddenly he was flooding roach... Or, uh, ling bane against your roaches right now in your door, you would be dead. Or, you, you know, if he was, like, running out of his base, it would be very scary for mm -hmm. you. That was a good bane connection, though, regardless. And now let's see what you make in production. Because you're a spy block, but let's see what you make right now. And now you're making roaches. So I agree with the fact that you're making roaches. That's fine. Because, I mean, you're not getting flooded yet. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is, is less aggression, more defense. Less less craziness where you throw your units away. It'll allow you to have to guard and to not only make, but then guard your drone count. And then once you have a, a drone count that's very high, and you're now you're in the drone, or sorry, the uh, the roach making phase. Once you're there, if you then have any excess lings, that's when you should be running across the map and doing what you just did. Uh, because then, even if he does counterattack you, you're 100% safe to a counter if he base trades you, because you would your roaches would easily hold it because you would have excessive amounts. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just trying to get to your optimal saturation as fast as you can because that is your goal. And then going into ag aggressive attacks, but before that, all it should be is uh, defensive sc and, and defensive uh, reactions and also scouting, very minimal attacks. Like if, for instance, if you'd have only sent two banes there, I wouldn't have given a single shit, because you could have had more banes and lings guarding your roaches that, when you only have three roaches. But when you sent all your lings and banes across the map to do that, it's a risk because you you have the potential to be flooded and die. That's, uh, yeah, that's mostly the hardest thing for people to, like, really figure out. Because I think a lot of players in ZVZ, they get overwhelmed and they're like, fuck, I'm going to die. Oh, my God. Everyone's being aggressive. Mm -hmm. Well, it just feels a lot easier to be aggressive than to have to defend a lot of the time. Yeah. Well, that's why, like, how often would you say you watch the minimap to see, like, when a, when a push is coming to you? Uh, half and half, honestly. Yeah. Because if you, if you read the minimap, you can always react in time always and if you have safety banes like i talked about 
you always have an initiator that can buy you even more time because no one can just run through your banes and be like, fuck it, I'm going, I'm going in there right now. The second you see banes in your opponent's base, like, what do you normally do? You actually take caution and you're like, all right, now I got to split my units up and I got to like actually try and pop those banes and I got to like not throw everything at him at once. And that, that is right there. That is buying time. Like 10 more seconds automatically because now he's trying to micro against that instead of just mm -hmm. walk, com like move commanding into your main mineral line or something like that. And you have a Nidus Worm. Oh, shit. <laughs> <You're> not, <laughs> this Nidus Worm is uh, ambitious, dude. That's crazy. I would say... Uh, definitely, probably like, probably not super necessary. Uh, it's it, this is good. like your, your build is kind of half and half all in and half and half macro. Because you're, you're, that looks like you're about to go for this fat timing with your Overseer going to his main base. And now it's not there yet, so you go to the third instead. This is risky. Like, you're both moving out to attack each other again. Uh, if you just defensively max out Roach Ravager off of good saturation, you'll have such a better uh, understanding and control aspect of ZVZ. And now he's coming back to defend. Yeah, and those Banes also, you could tell that they were in your army and they were all on a move command because they all went for the Queen. If you had your yep. Banes in your own group, you could have just right-clicked on a couple patches of his drones and then moved them to a different base or moved them back into the Nidus Worm. That would have been ideally the way to go about that. And again, Banes, when, with the style I'm recommending you to do, where you go Ling Bane into Roach Ravager into eventually Muta if the game is Roach Ravager versus Roach Ravager, you're not going to be using Banes the whole game anyways. It's just going to be a temporary thing. Like we're talking like the first five minutes or six minutes and you're probably on Roach phase then. Mm -hmm. And now like you're, you're making, so you like you made a lot of Roaches, you did a Nidus, you attacked him and your third base is still under saturated. It's just, it's over aggressive is all I'm saying here. This game is way too over aggressive for sure. Uh, like you're gonna kill the third though. It looks like I hopefully, you're not killing the third. You could have killed the third I there. Th yeah, yeah, that would have definitely helped a lot, but you're, you keep putting yourself in these situations where it's... And, you, and it's not just you. Your opponent does it too. A lot of Zergs do this. Where they overmake units, and if they don't get some type of good damage done, they're in this awkward stage where it's like, I don't really have a good economy, and I could keep making units. I, I don't know if I should. Uh, stuff like that. When if either one of you just made drones and defensively reacted and got to that stage faster where you're now ready to just make roaches all game because now you don't need drones anymore you would just win every fucking time. You, like, you would have... You would be like, well, my supply is 170 and his is 102, and I just run him over with Roach Ravager. It doesn't have to be fancy either with, like, Nidus's or drops. I just walk to his base, and I just go, hey, I have a way bigger army than you, and you die. Because yeah, you're both, again, making drones. Or, uh, sorry, making units, 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 units. And then, you know, you both squeeze out a round of drones here and there, but it's it's definitely very infrequent. God, this fly is so annoying. <laughs> it's been flying around my room fucking for like 25 minutes. Uh, and uh, here's another thing, too. Never make Banes. Ever. At this stage. Ever. The only, the, the only time I would ever say you should make Banes now when you're at Roach making phase and Roach Ravager phase is if your opponent is going Roach Hydra and you have Bane Speed. It's the only time it makes sense. Ever. Because when you're at the Roach phase, you're better off just making Roaches instead of Lings, straight up. So the more Roaches you have, the easier it is going to be to deal with him if he has anything like Zerglings mixed in with his army too. But Roaches, more Roaches just beat more Roaches. That's just as simple as that. And Bane Lings against his Roaches all that does to you is it, like each one of these Banes represents a Roach, and if he just micros a little bit, and he, let's f say for instance, he like spreads out the front line a little bit, and like 10 of your Banes blow up two Roaches, which is very, pr that's very likely to happen with how, you know, if it's one control group A move here. Uh, suddenly that's like now, he just because of that, it's like he has eight more Roaches than you, because you just spent like 10 Banes to blow up two Roaches, and a Roach and a Bane cost the same amount of gas, which is what your limiting factor should be again now. Uh, and, mm -hmm. the, and then if you have, if you ever have extra gas and you had lings or something just from early game, you'd be better off going and counter counterattacking with those lings if you have the ro high roach phase and just making ravagers 
Like, Ravagers are definitely the go-to unit here with Roaches. Because Ravagers give you so much more DPS in two ways. One is, obviously, if it AoEs the Roaches, it does a fuckload of damage. And the other is you force him to move around. Because if he doesn't move around, he takes a hit to the face with Corrosive Bile. So if you cast a Corrosive Bile, like one Corrosive Bile in the center of like five Roaches, and he doesn't move away, that's 60 damage times five. If he does move away, that's a free auto attack for you of your whole frontline concave, where he's backing up away from a Corrosive Bile. So either way, if he dodges it, or if he stands in it and takes damage, it's free damage for you, which is why a lot of players both go Roach Ravager versus Roach Ravager, because now suddenly both players are constantly moving a lot, and you're both doing a lot of damage to each other freely. Uh, and it comes down a lot to like if either player at some point accidentally eats the biles, but yeah, not having bile here is pretty awful for you, I would say. It's definitely okay. better than bins. Yeah, I think my hope was to put them in the night is here for a counter, but that could have been a lot more ravages. Yeah, no, like even then, if you're gonna go, if you still, if you if you were doing a style of nidises and counter attacks, you'd be better off having like four roaches in that, just like four roaches. Because and the reason why that's important is because you'll still have an overwhelming amount of army to defend yourself with, and four roaches could easily kill a mineral line and a queen. No, nope, like there's zero chance drones and one queen are gonna kill four roaches. Uh, and then on top of that, if he defensively runs all the way back across the map and goes to defend that with his whole army. You get control of the map now, and you can start shoving him, and you can expand and take your shit freely. And now if you're in that roach-making phase, you can now shove him backwards into his base and eventually kill him. Okay. Like, you should basically, you know what you should be thinking? This is what you should be thinking. Killing the mineral line is fine, but killing the hatchery is, is not necessary. And four roaches can accomplish that task. But if you were like, I'm going to put 20 roaches in there, and I'm going to like kill the hatchery too. Like, that's excessive, because what does that do? You lose control of your side of the map, and now he can kill your hatchery too. I think the way you should look at ZVZ is how can I get to that stage where I'm pumping roaches nonstop and not get fucked over. And then once I'm there, I can now fuck him over repeatedly because I have overwhelming amounts of everything. And then you should always think about how can I beat his army while distracting his ex expansions and stuff like that. You should always focus on the army at that stage. Like you can send little bits like two roaches, three roaches, four roaches to his expansions. But don't ever do like 20 roaches here, 20 roaches there, stuff like that, because all that's going to happen is you give yourself a chance to get overpowered in the army versus army. So. And your veins once again are blowing up on like an egg and shit, on the uh -huh. cocoons and yeah. Yeah, don't ever, honestly, just stop making veins once you start making roaches, it really, like it's, it's not necessary yeah. at that stage. Okay, I like that you're making Ravagers. You're still making a little bit more drones. Your drone count's only at 48, though. Like, you're definitely playing this low, low, low economy style. When you definitely need to get to that higher... Like, you had the lead for so long. Your opponent was actually the all-in one for a long time. And then ever since your third died, you've become the all-inner. Because all you've been doing since then is, like, light droning with lots of Nidus pressure and then, you know, Roach Baneling. Which means, like, and you're still... Neither one of you is maxed at 1345, which is insanely slow. If either one of you was, like, macroing properly, with aggression, that, with Ling Bane aggression that you did early, I bet either one of you could have maxed at, like, 10 minutes with Roach Ravager. But again, it's because both of you... Neither one of you is, like, really respecting the droning as much as you should be, as early as you should be. Okay, now, we're talking about Roach Ravager here. Be, okay, the, the, the proper way to micro roach ravager, I'm not going to tell you the improper ways because there's a lot of improper ways, but this is the proper way to micro roach ravager, okay? Wh like, okay. have it all in a control group, like one or something. That's fine. Whatever the fuck you feel comfortable with. And then as soon as you're in range to attack him and concave and, you know, have the concave spread, by, like, you're going to go C or whatever your hockey is for Cross of Bile. Hit, like, hit the hockey and then click the, click the center of his front line. Bile. 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 And like about that's about at that pace. Do not go <laughs> with like five biles at once. Just one, 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 one. And you're gonna spread them out too. You're not gonna have them all in the same exact spot. So like left, right, center, a little bit more to the left, a little bit more to the right. Just whatever. Whatever the fuck you can do. Just put them all in like the front line of the center, like around the front line of his concave, because you don't want to go to the back line because your ravages will be out of range. So like the front line of his concave and you do them one by one by one by one and you wait until he goes 
against you, and you just back up. And then you go forward again as soon as they hit the ground. You have about two seconds until the when the bile is cast, two seconds later it lands. So you can react to this appropriately. You have plenty of time to react. You can dodge his biles. If he spams his, and he's out of bile cooldown now, and you're still going one, 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 what happens there is he might dodge your biles, and you might dodge his biles, but there's two ways biles do damage. Number one is they actually connect, and they do a lot of fucking damage, which you can avoid, and it's easy to avoid it when they do it all at once, or you make him move his army, and you get free attack auto attacks while he runs around constantly to avoid getting hit by biles. Which is why one, 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 one makes more sense because you're getting so much more auto attack damage than he is because he's constantly moving out of biles repeatedly over and over and over and over. And if he doesn't, he's eating one bile, one bile, one bile, one bile. When all you have to do is you have to dodge one round of biles every seven seconds, which is like seven at once. Which means just back your army up for one second and then go forward again as soon as they hit the ground. And that's all it is. That's that's the proper way to micro road ravager with biles. Because notice how he casts a shitload of Biles at once, but you don't move out of it, and you just stand in it, and you just you just ate like probably 800 damage right there, right. and then right there again you just ate like another 800 damage, and then you're not biling him at all, and then he casts another like five Biles on you, you ate it. That's probably another like 600 damage right there, because it was a little bit more in the front line, not in the center. Probably like five five mm -hmm. to 600 damage right there on you again, and then you cast Biles. But you do it? That was, I think the first time you cast the Biles was it? Maybe. Uh, maybe. Okay. Well, then you back up again. That's proper. That was that that's, that that pullback and then move forward was perfect. You barely got, did not get hit by it. That's perfect. But I've seen you cast Biles so far, and I've seen him cast Biles a lot more. But the point is that both of you are casting all of it at once, and neither one of you should be doing that, because it's so easy to take advantage of Zergs who do do that the way I just told you about how to micro it. And you just cast all yours at once, he cast all his at once, and you're chasing. So he dodged it, and you got hit by it. But you didn't get hit by much, you got hit by one bile that hit two Ravagers, which is 120 damage. But it's still, it's more. your, your army is just getting softened up repeatedly, over and over and over. Don't be afraid to pull back and go forward, pull back and go forward, pull back and go forward. Because what you are doing, behind the scenes of the Roche Ravager Micro, what, you're, what you are doing in the north top right side of the map is actually fucking perfect. You're putting pressure on him by having a few roaches in his mineral line so that even if this fight doesn't actually happen and you're both like bile run away bile run away bile run away you're killing drones because you have roaches just four roaches in his mineral line this is fucking amazing this is so good like that that is that is very 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 good that you're doing that i can't stress it enough it's super good because he's not doing that to you so every second that goes by now he's being crippled more and more you're actually gaining a lead now in this game even though you should be behind at this stage because just because of that one little counterattack. How much damage does the one bile do? It does 60 damage and it AoEs anything it touches. A bile in the center of four roaches can hit four roaches. And same thing with four ravagers. It can hit the corner of all four units. And then so that would be 240 damage per bile if it was perfect biles like that. Uh that's basically two roaches right there. Yeah. So now he's doing it incorrectly. Like, he might win the fight, though, because you actually have so many roaches not in the fight in the bottom side of the map. But he is running into Biles like crazy. So he's getting damage done on you, but he's taking so much in the process. But yeah, I would say never, ever, ever try your best to never let this happen, where you have just a bunch of Ravagers in the middle of nowhere, and you have a bunch of roaches coming. You definitely should be... What you should be doing is throwing a Bile at him, like, up behind your ass and running back to your roaches so that if he chases you he keeps getting hit by biles but you're constantly running to your roaches so that your roaches can actually take the damage here like a ravager is not only squishier than a roach but it's also so much more expensive than a roach you definitely don't want to lose your ravagers and you're losing like all of your ravagers right now for the most part like yeah that was could have been better i think you just lost like half your ravagers there All right, and then uh, the kind of the build I was talking about is when you're in the stage of this where it's Roach Ravager versus Roach Ravager, I can't even begin to tell you how many Zergs are stuck on this phase forever. They really are. A lot of Zergs just feel like they get stuck here. If you just stop making Ravagers at like eight, okay? 
Go to eight and stop. Do not make like 20 Ravagers. Just make eight and you're good. And that's enough to go bile, 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 bile. And have it literally go forever because the cooldown is seven seconds. Uh, and, and also another reason why I'm going to tell, tell you one more thing. Another reason why stacking biles like crazy when you go <laughs> and just throw like seven mad at once is because it, three, three biles is more than enough to kill every single unit you're going to be fighting. Three biles is enough to kill a Ravager, a Roach, a Hydra. One bile kills a Bane and a Zergling. Two biles kills a, or two biles kills a Hydra. Three biles kills a Roach and a Ravager. Uh, and the reason why it's not three and not two for a Ravager is because you also have regen, and a Ravager would live with one hit point if it got hit by two biles. But if you like, for instance, if you hit someone with seven biles or you hit him with three biles, it's the same fucking thing because the unit's dead either way. So sp that's why it also makes no sense to spam your biles like crazy. And instead, you should be going like one by one by one by one by one instead of going just fucking throwing them all out at once. Um, now, going back to what I was saying a second ago, where both players are in the stage of Road, Road Travager, if you just stop at eight and you make a spire, you could actually wep weapon upgrade your spire as soon as it's done. And then, if you ever find yourself maxed out versus his max out, and you have a fight where it's still Road Travager versus Road Travager, and you see he has like 18 of them, and you have eight, and you're, you're, you're not just shoving into his army throwing your whole army away you're just doing this roach counterattack thing you did with like four roaches that was perfect and you're trading bile to bile to bile to bile you're just backing up and going forward and backing up and going forward and both of you start losing roaches here and there and suddenly you find yourself down 20 supply because you've, you're not losing your whole army you're just losing bits and pieces of it and you remake into 10 mutas right there and then suddenly 10 mutas pop out with plus one weapons and you fly over to his roach ravager army and you just shift a, a click all of his ravagers well, that puts him on a clock now because those mutas are going to kill every Ravager he fucking has. And you can just back up as well. Back all the way to your base to buy yourself as much time for your mutas to kill as many Ravagers as possible. And there's a good chance that by the time he gets to your base, he has no Ravagers anymore. And it's just Roaches for him versus Ravager Roach Muta for you. And then every time a Roach dies again, you can keep making more mutas up until you have like 25 muta. And now suddenly you can one-shot Roaches and Ravagers all day. And you can kill his Roach army super fast. And if he doesn't have a Hydrogen or a Spire, you can repeatedly kill his army super hard. And then your Roach army with your Ravagers can walk across the map and just end the game. Because you can kill his base. Your mutas themselves might even just be able to end the game. Which is why that, that style is so fucking good. I like it. Alright, so any questions? I can make you the build really fast, but any questions about what we just talked about? Uh, nope. I'll add this up. Okay. Good. Good shit, man. Good lesson so far. This is, uh, definitely just understanding how to play the game out and, uh, you know, proper ways to drone in ZVZ. I have a, I have a question for you, though. Just because this yeah. is more micro-based, do you want to play me, and I will give you an example of, you can save the replay from my perspective, of how to play it sure. instead of me playing an AI. Because if I play an AI, it's, it doesn't really go into the, the proper aggressive format. Okay. Do you want me to sit or actually play? Uh, I want you to actually, uh, yeah, pl uh, just play your own fucking style. Do whatever you want. Play the best you can is what I want you to do. Okay. And then I'm going to do a style that you should start emulating yourself more. And uh, yeah, that's what we would do. And then uh, I'm probably... I'm gonna. I'm just gonna give you a, a little disclaimer here. I'm probably going to kill you with Roach Ravager, <laughs> but I will make. I just know that after Roach Ravager, when you stop at like eight Ravagers, is when you should make the Spire. Okay. But the uh, the big one for you is you would not have had to go to the Muta phase if you just had a good economy to go Roach Ravager with. Okay. Now, if you kill me, you'll make me look like an idiot, right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm probably going to kill you now. And I just lose this game. Like, oh, never mind. So get ready for the 13 12. Yeah. It's like, even if you did no. do that, I, I honestly, even if you did do that, it would be fine. I wouldn't care because I'm paying attention to scouting you. And the whole two minute rule I told you about would be able to handle that. Right. But it's all about forcing aggression out of your opponent and defensively having Banes to fall back on every time in the early stage and getting yourself into the Roach stage. And once you're in the Roach stage, if they're not even close to it, the game just ends. It really is just over at that point because you'll never have enough otherwise.
Alright, and then, yeah, I mean, I, I guess we don't have to keep talking because we're both playing, but yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask, and uh, I, by all means, I'll answer for you. Okay. And bin nests you usually put like one pixel away from your natural, right? You usually don't put it in your wall? You can do either one. E either one's fine. If you're gonna go, f if you're gonna play the style of going for a follow up of roaches in, in Evo Chamber right after, putting it in the wall is actually probably better. But if you're gonna play a style of like heavy Ling Bane for a while, then putting it next to your hatchery makes more sense there. Okay. So now both of us see the expansion. You sh both of us should know. Yeah, there's no early weird shit. It's pretty standard. And now this is when you should be taking your third. And uh, watching where the lings go and how many there are. If there's if your opponent makes like eight lings now or something, you probably want to make more lings and stay defensive. Uh, because that's not normal. That's like an over aggressive amount. But if your opponent makes like a standard amount, like four or two, then it doesn't really... You don't have to play defensive. And also know this. If you ever see your opponent has less lings than you, if he ever has less than you, if you have, if you're the one who has four and he has two, always fuck his third up. Every time, just go by and fuck his third up, because you'll force more lings yeah. out of him that way. But also, I wouldn't be too worried about scouting my base right now because the fact that I have a third this fast, and the fact that uh, my ha my natural was normally timed, you already know there's no all in. Or you should know that. And now this is when I make my third queen because we have a good drone count. And I make safety banes. I'm not going crazy on lings. I'm just making safety. In case you do a fucking flood on me. But I'm not going to like force a flood out of myself. Because I'm going to be greedy. And I'm making drones still. And now I see more lings coming in. A little bit more lings, not a lot. And now I see more lings again coming out of you. So, and then, but there's also some drones. So I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, like a well-rounded number. I'm going to make like, we're talking, um, you know, like probably like 10 lings and stop. And then that's going to be just like enough for me to hold myself basically in case you do something really aggressive. And now, every like minute, I'm gonna send two lings into your base to scout you again. Just to see what you're doing. Because I don't know if you're gonna do a roach flood or something like that. Like, I have to figure that out. Because I don't have, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. Okay, there's a couple lings coming into your base, and I'm not worried about that yet, because it's not enough to be worried. I see your roach one, I see your evo, I see your lair. I see drones again, so I'm droning again. And I know that. I know that I can drone because I don't. I'm not intimidated by what you're doing because I just saw what you're doing. It's not a question mark anymore. So like, I'm gonna scout you again in probably a minute, and follow up another one. But right now, I'm already at 60 drones, 62 drones. This is like, like you want to get to that fucking roach phase as fast as you can. Because if you if you spot aggression, you react to it. But otherwise, you drone, 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 drone. You don't force aggression out of yourself. Otherwise, you stay stuck in the roach phase forever. Or sorry, the Ling phase forever. And you don't want to be there. You want to get out of that phase as fast as you can if you're playing macro. And then now I'm getting Roach speed. And now I'm already going into Roach phase. And now I'm going to scout you again with another like two Lings. And I'm, I'm just cranking Roaches like crazy now. And I'm going to look at your third midter line now this time because I want to see how many drones you have to my third. And you have a fully saturated base. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run lings across the map. And I'm going to go for a counter. I'm going to try and fuck you up while I go roaches. Because, again, as I was telling you last game, it does not matter now if I leave my base a little bit more exposed without having lings there. Because I'm already going mass roaches, I will have plenty of roaches to 
defend myself. I'm not worried about if you do a counter on me. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you up, quote, quote. No, it's, well, it's like, you know, this is the idea of how you want to be playing the game. It's more like just speaking through the thought process. Sorry, I'm talking to chat as well. Nah, you're good. It's a little bit terrifying, though, knowing that you're basically telling me what you're going to do and I can do nothing about it. No, it's, well, it's just efficiency. It's all it is. And it takes practice. It's, okay, so you're there. You're defending. So I, I attempted and it failed. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to multitask you. Because it, otherwise I would just have thrown that army away. I'm going to attack your base now because I have roach speed. And this is when you should move out. Never move out before roach speed. Because if you move out before roach speed and your opponent rushes tech, you get fucked for that. Like, he can definitely overpower you. If he's all inning you. But as soon as you have roach speed, it's really easy to kite backwards and not get screwed over. So now if I force pressure at your natural, it forces you to react. And if you don't have enough to react, you die. While you react, I'm going to kill your drones at your third. And this is a, this is like that test, right? To see if you have enough. And I'm... You know, I'm still cranking roaches like crazy here. All we're doing is making roaches. And you can see you're losing. If you're losing the fight here, this it's just this is how most of your games will go. And it's all about who makes the army or who makes the drone count faster and switches into this phase. And now you're just going to be flooded till you die. Right. So that's why you always want to like get out of the habit of being like masslings trade lings away, masslings trade them away again. That's why I was saying like definitely do not. Like, if, if not, when you had a bunch of lings earlier and you were attacking him, and I was like, do not trade here when it's just ling versus ling. Because all that did okay. was it forced you to make lings again. And yeah, yeah that's, that's the moment when you're just like, well, fuck. Okay, well, I'm stuck on ling phase. I know it's fucking hard. It's, it's super hard to like play and talk and listen at the same time. I know I'm not expecting the best game that you've ever played in your life to come out of this. But it's just a concept, right? All right. And like right now, I would imagine your supply is probably like 100, and we're maxed out. Uh, so yeah, I'm at like 70 now. Yeah, it's uh this. This is how most of your games should look. Uh, if you just play roach phase. Uh, you you play the economy phase into roaches, and like once you have like you know, eight again eight ravager. If you if you find yourself stalemating out with your opponent, once you have like eight ravager, that's when you just make the spire, and you can start switching into wep uh, spire weapon upgrades. And stuff like that. Okay. But anyways, any questions before we wrap it up? Uh, no, that makes sense. Alright, man. Save save the replay for sure, and just watch the. Uh, you went Ninus again. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, save the replay no, for I sure. Just went there at the end for fun. <laughs> and you can use it as like a checkpoint again to like see how you're pacing with what I did to what you do. And you can see like the you know the movement of units and stuff like that. But good shit. Good stuff. Uh, I do. I appreciate you doing another coaching lesson, man. I hope it helps. Yeah, it definitely does. I'll be hitting you up for uh, Protoss down the road here. All right, man. Sounds good. Uh, until next time, take it easy. Good luck. And, uh, dude, thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Have a great stream. Thanks, dude. All right, guys. That's been, a, that's been another coaching lesson uh, with Ignatius. Thank you, dude. That was a master's level coaching lesson. Um, but yeah, that's right there. What I, what we just did, that's probably the most the most standard way to play ZVZ. Ling Bane defense into saturating three bases, into Roach Ravager, into whatever the fuck you want to do after that. It could be Lurker Hydra, it could be Muta. I think Muta is probably easiest because a lot of people get stuck on Roach Ravager forever. And Muta's versus Roach Ravager is really easy because Roach Ravager cannot hit air unless you sit in a bile. Uh, but yeah, that's a pr pretty super standard strong replay or uh, style rather there. But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, go check out more of the YouTube videos I have if you want more action. And I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace. Goodbye. Good luck. See you guys.